a super, super, super important subject that very few people touch on is, of course, healthcare. Without healthcare, no life is possible. You can have all the money that you want. You can have everything that you want. But if you don't consider healthcare, if you don't have a solid plan in place on healthcare, then your time overseas might not be good. You might not need healthcare. But what if you do? So I wanted to get some information from you, Jesse. Like, what's the private healthcare sector like in Paraguay? Okay. Like in every country, we have the public and the private sector. Of course, we can say as the Paraguayan, mostly they will always choose for the private sector because it's the most qualified, the best one. But the public sector is also not so bad because, for example, if you work as a normal employee here in Paraguay with a company that works or have their businesses inside of Paraguay, you normally pay monthly um, an amount of money, almost 10% if you are a, a, an employer for employee. And this goes for your healthcare, which is totally for free. For example, you have all sort of um, services, health services like dental or everything. So, but the quality is not good. And for example, if you, <laughs> Like in every country, Paraguay has good and bad side of the healthcare, public healthcare. But normally you find this, the best ones is the private sector. The not so good is the public sector. And it's normally for people that want also the retirement here in Paraguay. So if you're a normal employee here in Paraguay, you will pay for your healthcare, the public sector, and for your retirement. But in terms of quality, it's not so good because, for example, you need to wait for a turn or something for this appointment. So it's not so fast, but, uh, for example, if you are going to a uh, private sector, it's very immediate and it's also good and it's not so expensive. Uh, for example, in Brazil, it's almost the same uh, level of quality and also the prices. So most Paraguayans will pay for a private uh, health system and not for the public because the private is always the better. But for example, if you are a businessman and you have your businesses here in Paraguay and you want Paraguayan employees, you will normally have to pay also a part of their health care and also for their retirement monthly. So uh, Paraguayans, can have these two options, the private and the public. But if you want immediate and good uh, health care for your kids, for example, you will always pay for a private sector. So that's the how it works here in Paraguay. Mm -hmm. The health care in Europe has changed, and I would say it has changed for the worse in many parts and in many ways, because the health care sector, I mean, it's gotten really overloaded in recent years, and it's not what it used to be. However, I would say that healthcare in Europe is probably more reliable than it is in the US. And I kind of want to compare a little bit here. Let's say you work for a company in Europe or you're self-employed. Of course, you can access public healthcare. And it's always the same, the public healthcare, if you need an appointment to get something not so urgent done, the waiting times can be really long. And of course, that upsets people. They want to get the treatment faster. And the hospitals don't really prioritize you unless it's something really urgent. If it's an emergency, they usually prioritize you, assuming they have enough hospital beds. And there were issues during COVID, you know, when hospitals really got overloaded. And that holds especially true for countries with a high median age per person. So Western Europe was definitely affected by this fact during COVID, during the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. And I think private healthcare works the same pretty much anywhere. Mm -hmm. If you get private healthcare, if you get like a private insurance, it tends to be better, right? You have access to the better hospitals. The public hospitals, you know, the quality of public hospitals in Europe has been declining over the past couple of decades. Uh, it's still good, but it's been declining, like I said. And generally speaking, the, you know, generic healthcare plan that you're on it covers the basic stuff when it comes to dental care. So if you need something done like an implant or if you need something done like cleaning a few times a year, 
your healthcare plan might not cover that. It might cover cleaning just once a year. Or if you need gum treatment or like a filling, it might not cover that, right? It might just cover like the basic stuff. And that might be included in the healthcare plan if you have a good private healthcare plan. And sometimes you have to pay, you know, a lot of things in, in cash. However, again, something important, an emergency like a root canal treatment is almost always covered in most Western European countries. Subscribe now and turn on alerts to never miss any of my future nomadism, dating and business advice videos. Thank you for watching.